All right, for this first video on igneous rocks, I just want to kind of go through the uh, the textures and compositions part uh, first. So the, the felsic, intermediate, and mafic for the composition, which is basically the mineralogy, right? And then for the textures, <clears throat> the uh, aphanitic uh, to the phaneritic, which is basically fine grain to coarse grain, and then also porphyries, which kind of occupy a space between the two. So to start off, uh, let's let's look at basalt here, which is aphanitic or fine grained, and uh, mafic, or it basically means it's it's dark. It's got a lot of heavier elements in there, a lot of heavier minerals, iron and magnesium. So the aphanitic here, you can see there, there's no large crystals in here that are kind of shining at me. This is just a a kind of fairly dull dark dark rock there are crystals in this rock i mean you're looking at them they're just tiny you can't really see them sometimes they'll be big enough that they'll be a little bit kind of sparkling you can see there's some shimmer to this and that's due to those crystals that do exist there they're just really small now if i took this this rock when it was still a lava and cooled it off even faster i'd get an even finer grained texture and it would look like this which is obsidian so you get that really, really glassy texture. So you take a, a lava or a magma and let it cool off slightly slower than this, and you get you get this. You get this piece of basalt. Let me see. I don't see my gabber around here. We can take it to the next level. <laughs> so if you let it cool off even slower than this, so same chemistry, right? You're, you're still mafic, darker darker minerals. If you let it cool off even slower, those crystals will start to get nice and big. And so you can kind of see all these, there's different crystal faces in here, or different cleavage faces in here uh, on this piece of gabbro. Uh, it also, oddly enough, used to be a countertop. This is actually a cut and polished face right, right here. But a dark crystalline rock, so there's your, your gabbro. And I'll go over all of these individually in the, the later videos. So that's kind of showing the uh, a bunch of mafic uh, rocks from really fine grain, but basically aphanitic to phaneritic, right? So let's look at uh, something a little more felsic. So here is a fine grained felsic rock. So very light colored, very fine grained, no crystals in there. This is rhyolite. And if I were to cool this off slowly, it would end up turning into a piece of granite. And I've got multiple pieces of granite here with some slightly different minerals in them. But all of them are very light colored. Uh, but if you look closely here, you can see the individual crystals on this. They're, they're kind of large. You can see those kind of shiny ones in there. That's, that's the quartz. The really kind of wider stuff or felled spars like this. So there's a more phaneritic texture is, is uh, this granite. And this is a great piece. You can see those large crystals in there. You know, they're, they're about a millimeter or two across. Uh, so the, the kind of grayish there is kind of smoky quartz, and then the pink is uh, potassium feldspar. And there's some slightly darker minerals that are occasionally in here. I hardly see any on this one. Uh, and this lighter piece of granite, which has lighter feldspars in it, there are some slightly uh, darker minerals that you can see that are that are in there. So, again, aphanitic, which is fine-grained, uh, rhyolite, no crystals, kind of dull, but still light-colored. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's show you a piece of andesite. So here we have, well, we'll stick with, with fine-grained, right? or aphanitic, and we'll go through the composition. So here's my piece of rhyolite, which is felsic. Here's my piece of basalt, which is mafic. Both are fine-grained or aphanitic. And here's something in between. This is kind of a purplish rock, and it's the andesite. So it kind of occupies that in-between space. So you can see it getting darker and darker, uh, and then it's literally actually getting heavier. Uh, because we have more iron and magnesium in these rocks and less silica as we go this way. 
there are also porphyries. So let's take a look at a porphyry. Uh, I think this... This is probably my best one. Uh, some of the porphyries that are floating around, the, the class and the rock kits, if those are a thing, um, is this one, and it's kind of greenish. It's a little harder to see, but if you look, there's kind of some darker phenocrysts in here, some darker uh, uh, crystals. There's kind of a big one right there by my thumb. A little bit, a little bit harder harder to see, but I'll, I'll show you, and this is a, an andesite, so I'll show you this one. This is a pretty good one. This is almost a granite, almost almost getting there, but the background sort of texture to this is fine grain, but you can see these big white crystals in here, right? So that, that white crystal right there that my thumb is pointing to, it's the same thing as that, that mineral over there. Focus. This mineral over here, it's plagioclase. And you can kind of see those white white chunks throughout this rock. So this is a nice rhyolite porphyry. So when you get a light, when you when you have this rock, this uh, this rhyolite, and cool it off quickly, or sorry, cool it off slowly, crystals will start to grow. And then if you shoot it to the surface after these crystals have started to grow, the rest will cool off quickly, uh, and you'll get you'll get a rhyolite porphyry instead of just a pure rhyolite. Uh, here's a, another porphyry. Uh, this one's pretty dark. You can see these darker minerals in here, though, right? You can see those crystals. Those are those phenocrysts. Those are those. Those are the things that make this a porphyry. Now, if I tell you, if I ask you, what what rock is this? It's a porphyry, but is it? It's pretty dark. But is it really dark? I don't know. Would you call this a basalt porphyry or an andesite porphyry? So again, we can bring up our uh, our little scale here from light to dark. So basalt, andesite, rhyolite. Uh, where is this? Is that uh, closer to that one? Or is that uh, closer to that one? And it's probably it's probably right in the middle. You ask some people, they'll call this a basalt porphyry, and you ask some people, they'll call this an andesite porphyry. That's okay. Now, we could literally, you know, break this rock apart, get some mass spectrometers and microscopes or whatever, and figure out exactly the type of minerals that make up this really fine-grained matrix here. Um, <clears throat> and we could determine by the numbers where this technically would fit. But, you know, we're not going to do that when we're out walk walking around. I'd probably call this an andesite porphyry, but I know there's a probably geologists and other professors here at, uh, at NWAC that would argue that this is a basalt porphyry. So, again, and I talk about this in the little lab lecture, like, you know, science likes to put things in, into boxes so you can classify things, but nature kind of works on a spectrum, right? It works on a, on a scale, and it's very sort of organic in that way. So there is room for argument, and that's okay. What else? There are some other textures like these. This is the vesicular texture. These have vesicles. This one is scoria. Uh, another thing you can call this is this vesicular basalt. So you get a really dark, uh, dark mafic rock, and you put little gas holes in it. Yep, I said that. Uh, and we call them vesicles. And so we could call this vesicular basalt. Or the other name for it is scoria, which is easier to say. And then there's pumice, which is super duper light. Uh, if I had a glass of water, we could see if this thing floats. Let's do it. This is my drinking water. I should use a different cup, but oh well. Let's see if it floats. Oh, it's magic. Look at that. Pumice floats. And sometimes when there's volcanic eruptions, uh, off of certain coasts that will erupt this this type of rock, you'll actually see tons and tons of this floating around on the surface uh, of the ocean. I guess I'm going to pour that out now. I don't recommend drinking the water of the pumice that you just floated, or if that makes sense. 
Uh, this is basically, this cooled off really quickly, and this is basically volcanic glass. So if I were to like shred this up, you don't, you don't want to breathe that in or anything. Um, so that's kind of textures and, uh, and compositions. And so yeah, we'll move on to uh, uh, kind of classifying these rocks and looking at them individually, and I'll, I'll just talk about them individually.